all season we've had a lack of intensity and a lack of enthusiasm and all of a sudden, you know, at least we have something to grasp onto and to build on. Just everywhere you go, all the hockey players you talk to, it's their dream to play in this tournament. The bean pot's always something that can change a season around. You know, people are so happy they thought you won it all, and they, uh, you know, and they don't understand that we still got a big game to play. Nicknamed after dogs by their schools and picked as underdogs by hockey experts. Northeastern and Boston University both find themselves in the 47th Beanpot Championship. It's definitely a dog's life at the fleet tonight. Hi again, everybody, and welcome inside the 68 Sports Studios. I'm John Holt. Hockey East Commissioner Joe Britannia joins me later in the show to break down and analyze tonight's matchup. First, we set the scene from the Fleet Center, where Doug Brown is standing by. Thanks very much, John. We're all gearing up here at the Fleet Center, just minutes away from the opening face-off, the finals of the 47th Annual Beanpot Championship. Tonight, it'll be the Boston University Terriers against the Northeastern Huskies. For BU, a chance to do something no team has ever done in this tournament, win it five years in a row. For Northeastern, well, the last time they won this championship was back in 1988. This is only the second time they've been to the finals since then. Incidentally, it was 11 years ago tonight, February 8th, 1988, the last time the Huskies won this championship. They beat BU that night, but they have lost the last six meetings in the Beanpot Tournament between these two teams. We're going to have all the action, of course, coming up for you here on 68 Sports, and we're happy to welcome back as one of our Beanpot 99 sponsors, the New England Mitsubishi Dealers, and here representing all of the Mitsubishi Dealers around New England is Len Leibowitz, the general manager of Danvers Mitsubishi. Len, very happy to have you here with us. Thanks, Doug. It's a real pleasure to be here tonight representing the New England Mitsubishi Dealers, uh, and tonight we will be presenting the Mitsubishi Scholarship Award to the championship uh, team in the amount of $2,500. So the uh, championship team tonight not only gets to skate around with the trophy, but they also get that check into the general scholarship fund, right? That's correct. That's All correct. Right. Now, I know you're a big college hockey fan, but do you have, kind of have to stay neutral in this well, one tonight? We're giving a, an award of uh, this type of way. Uh, tonight, I have to, uh, have to uh, be impartial. All right, we'll be watching you all night long. We'll have cameras on you. Make sure you're playing it down the middle. Okay, thank you. All right. Thanks very much, Len, and thanks to the New England Mitsubishi dealers as well. That's Len Leibowitz from Danvers Mitsubishi. Mike Ruzioni will join me in a little bit, and we will have all the play-by-play -play of the finals of the 47th Annual Beanpot Championship from the Fleet Center between BU and Northeastern, and, of course, all the post-game excitement as well, the skating around of the championship trophy, the presentation of the MVP, the Everly Awards, all of that coming up tonight here on 68 Sports. We're looking forward to it. Hope you are too. We'll be back in a little bit. But right now, back to our 68 Sports Studios. Here's John Holt. Thank you, Doug. We will see both you and Mike for Face Off. Now, if you missed any of the action from opening Monday last week, you missed just the third time ever that both games went into overtime, making for extra hockey and plenty of extra drama. Now, Fahey. Plays the lob pass out to center ice, and it's bouncing for Zoller in alone. Stop, rebound, score! Brian Cummings wins it for Northeastern. Uh, this is a dream come true. I uh, used to watch this my whole life. When I, you know, on TV, I'll come in here with my father, and you just sit there and you, and you wonder if that'll ever happen to you. And I'm just in shock. Uh, I can't believe this. <laughs> This is a pretty good win. Uh, it's, uh, you know, anytime you can come into a tournament like this and especially win in overtime, um, I mean, they don't really get much better than that. I told the kids between the third, after the third period and overtime that, uh, you know, this is kind of what dreams are made of. You've got a great opportunity to, you know, 18 of you skating out there to, to be a hero, any one of you. And, um, you know, you dream about that. And, uh, a lot of times it doesn't come true, but you had a great, you, now you've got it at hand and uh, somebody take advantage of it. Delphi waiting for a loose puck if it comes his way. Up the boards, Dagerman gets it out. Possible two on one. Heron with Bartlett. Heron across for Bartlett. Save! Score! Russ Bartlett puts PU in the final. 
I don't even know what happened. Uh, next thing I know, we're at our blue line going on two on one with uh, Chris Aaron, and he gave me a great pass, and I put it on net. That's basically what I tried to do. <laughs> I went in. I really had a lot more confidence after practice this week that we were going to play better, and I knew we played real hard against BC. Uh, I had a lot more confidence be before the game started when I saw last year's captains Chris Drury and Chris Kelleher come down and talk to the team for a minute. They've never lost at being bought, so it was nice to have them. I told them to go in and rub everybody once just to see if we could make sure that it stick with us. Northeastern and BU are meeting for the 30th time in Beanpot play, with the Terriers holding a decided 22-7 edge, including wins in the last six meetings. The 96 Beanpot title game was one of those BU victories. Future Hobie Baker winner Chris Drury was a sophomore that night, and boy, did he leave his mark. Northeastern had earned its first trip to the final since 88, but Drury would spark the Terriers over the Huskies with a hat trick. The schools combined for eight goals in a wild first period, while BU scored six goals alone in the second to take an 11-3 lead and go on to win it 11-4. Drury collecting Beanpot MVP honors in the process, joining his sibling Ted, who played for Harvard, is the only brother combination to win Beanpot MVPs. As for the Terriers, it became what is now their second Beanpot championship in a current streak of four, shooting for five tonight. Back in 88, when the Huskies won their last bean pot, they did, in fact, beat BU 6-3, the final. When we come back, Paul Devlin joins us live from the fleet with word on BU's drive for five and the quest to make a second straight senior class undefeated in bean pot play. To be the first team to ever win five in a row, that would uh, be extremely special uh, just to be a part of that. But I think it would be even more special with... Uh, to salvage the season a little bit with with this uh, victory in the Bean Pot Final and to give the three seniors uh, a great going away present. Northeastern not used to dressing at this late hour and yes, it is time to take the next step. The Huskies have been accustomed to playing in the early game, i.e. the consolation round. Coach Bruce Crowder had hopes of that changing this year and well, he has seen those hopes come true. Face off from the fleet comes our way at the top of the hour. Time to head down to Causeway Street right now, though, and check in with Paul Devlin, who has been keeping a close eye on BU's run at an unprecedented fifth straight championship. Hi, Paul. Well, John, just over uh, a week ago, Boston University had no grand illusions about winning this tournament. Coach Jack Parker told me before the Boston College game, he didn't feel good about the way the team was playing, and all you had to do was look back at the month of January. The Terriers were 0-5-1, playing some of their worst hockey game of the season. February comes around, boom, different team, different story. They upset Boston College, they beat Mary back. confidence is rising. Now they find themselves on the brink of another championship and another record. Final seconds of the period. It's the drive for five. Centering score! Another chance to cruise down history lane. Score! A win tonight, and Boston University adds another record to their already impressive bean pot collection. To be the first team to ever win five in a row, that would uh, be extremely special uh, just to be a part of that. But I think it would be even more special with, uh, to salvage the season a little bit with with this uh, victory in the Beanpot Final and to give the three seniors uh, a great going away present. A victory sends Dan Ronan, Albie O'Connell, and Michelle LaRock off with a fourth Beanpot trophy, a feat matched only by the senior class of a year ago. But this class is not interested in going away presents. They want to salvage a season that's been a disappointment. Uh, the Beanpot's always something that can change a season around. Uh, I think with BU teams traditionally, that they come around this time, they really start to uh, come together, they put some wins together, and I think it definitely with the, the way we've been playing of late, it's, uh, it would mean a lot. It would um, you know, help make our season and help maybe propel us uh, to better things at the end of the year. Boston University heads into the championship game with one of the best and most experienced goalies in the country. Michelle LaRock has been a four-year starter and has enjoyed a spectacular career but he has never been in goal for a Beanpot championship. And it's hard to imagine any senior wanting this one more than LaRock. Yeah, exactly. I've been, you know, behind Tom Noble there in the Beanpot finals. He's been playing for the last three years. And uh, now it's my chance, and I want to do the most out of it. LaRock and Boston University seek to avenge a January 17th loss to the Huskies. In that game, Northeastern peppered LaRock with 33 shots, beating him 3-1. Coach Jack Parker sees a Husky team that's a dangerous one. They play in their system real well. They're real disciplined. 
and they're a lot more talented than people understand. They, they're quick to the puck. They, they're physical when they have to be, but they're uh, they're pretty creative too. So I think, uh, and they're creative in the power play. So they they bring a lot of a lot to the table and a lot that I don't think a lot of people want to give them credit for. They're they're a much better team than people realize. The Terriers may be the underdogs in this game, but they are still kings of the tournament. This will be their 15th final in the last 16 years. A perennial power, the Terriers know they won't be the most popular team in the building tonight. Um, you could sense it a little bit uh, on this past Monday night where uh, people were sensing that it, uh, it was time for BU to step down and give the throne to someone else. Um, it was weird to hear people booing BU, but uh, it'll be all right. I mean, I, I think kids uh, fed off that uh, that energy a little bit, and uh, I think we'll enjoy uh, people being against us. It's a lot of fun playing when uh, there's not a lot of people that like you. They won't be favorites with the fans, but they will be favorites on the ice, and that's because of their home away from home advantage. They are 7-0 in the Beanpot Tournament here at the Fleet Center. John? That only loss ever at the Fleet Center for BU coming in the Hockey East uh, playoffs. Paul, you've been around this team. How do you assess the confidence of BU? They slumped so badly in January. There's no question the confidence is rising, and you can look back to Friday's game against Lowell, a very uninspiring play. Four seniors were benched, four starters were benched, and that really turned things around. They upset Boston College. They played extremely well against Merrimack, and they have a red-hot goaltender in Michelle LaRock coming into tonight's game. John? All right, Paul, thanks for the report. Well, fans in Terrier Nation have come to expect Beanpot Championships, those with allegiances to Northeastern have lived a much more tormented Beanpot life. To quote NU student newspaper this week, we are the Boston Red Sox of this tournament. Long droughts heartbreaking losses. Of course, all that may be changing after a week at Northeastern like few others in recent seasons. I'm seeing it for the first time, just uh, what this tournament means and what it means to be in, a, in, in the championship game. For Bruce Crowder and his young Husky team, a win in the Beanpot semifinals has meant a week as the toast of Huntington Avenue. Suddenly, students and administrators, friends and strangers, are bursting at the seams with Husky pride. You have a lot more friends this week than, than usual. Uh, a lot of people looking for tickets now. I think they think we have a big, big bucket of tickets in the locker room that we can just grab and pass out. But uh, you just got to, you know, be nice to everybody that comes up and talks to you. But kind of gets overwhelming after a while. While Crowder is wise enough not to put a damper on campus confidence, convinced that a Friday night loss to Maine will surely be enough to do the trick, he's also chosen not to fan the flames, passing on a pep talk from Husky alums who were part of the glorious four Beanpot Championship 80s. When you have a young team, I think if you kind of do some of those things that it might hurt them a little bit, we're just trying to keep a lot of it status quo. We've got a game Monday night. Yeah, it's a huge game, um, but I think if we start uh, bringing ghosts out of the closet and things like that, uh, they're going to be thinking about something else instead of worrying about what we want, what we want them to do with the systems. Systems that delivered the Huskies a 3-1 breakthrough win over the Terriers last month. Their first victory at Walter Brown Arena since 1990, a stretch encompassing 18 games. We were going hard, we were forechecking real hard, um, you know, getting on and making the defense uh, a pay because they were, I think they were shorthanded a couple of defensemen. And um, we just we just played a, a good up tempo game. We banged them, we uh, played smart, we shut down their top line, and we, and we went out there and we, we got the job done. In the past, even though they have been so successful, they are a young team. And just like us, and uh, they're definitely beatable. The consensus more precisely being, the Terriers are beatable if you can better their superstar, goalie Michelle LaRock. He's an uh, outstanding goaltender. You know, he has been the past couple years in this league, and, you know, if, if you want to win anything or, uh, you know, get notability, you know, you're going to have to get the puck past him. Win or lose tonight, NU gets two more cracks at BU later this month. But somehow, the magnitude of those matchups just doesn't promise to measure up. After all, Billy Newson could guarantee his sister a seat those nights. My sister called me up from Atlanta. She's like, I'm thinking about coming up. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, eh, I'm going to come up. And she's like, OK. Or I'm like, OK. And she said, I, I want to come to the game. And I'm like, um, I don't know if I can get you a ticket. <laughs> And she was like, she was like, you know, why not? And I'm like, well, you know, these games are sold out before we even play them. 
No word if Billy's sister ever did get a ticket. Lucky for you, you don't need one. 68 Sports has you covered all night long. After the break, analyst Joe Britannia checks in to break down tonight's goalie matchup. Senior Michelle LaRock and this guy, Husky freshman Jason Braun. Stay with us. How's this for dedication? Some two-plus hours before face-off. A uh, dedicated Terrier fan showing up complete with his five-in-a-row drive four five sign. Great seats. Welcome back to the 68 Sports Studios. John Holt alongside Hockey East Commissioner Joe Britannia joining us once again to analyze tonight's play. Joe, welcome. Goaltending always seems to play a big part in the Beanpot Finals tonight. A study in contrast, BU veteran Michelle LaRock making his first start in the Beanpot Championship, but certainly not his first start in a big game. On the other side, the freshman 20-year-old Jason Braun for Northeastern. Now he's the younger of the two. He's the rookie, but if you go back to last week in the opening round of this uh, tournament, he made the most memorable saves late in the third period against Harvard and a couple of key saves at the beginning of overtime. So he's, he's been tested in a short amount of time. Bruce Crowder has had to put this kid in some pressure situations all season. He's responded. Well, he was in goal when uh, Northeastern beat BU and ended a long streak uh, over Walter Brown Arena a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he had a shutout early in the year against a very good Colgate team. And I think his 18 starts in a row shows you the confidence that that's building in him. Uh, Friday night against Maine, he held them to one goal through 40 minutes. And you would hope to bring Braun along slowly this season, but that all changed when All-American Mark Robitaille left school early for a pro contract with the Maple Leafs. Well, I want to defend the young goaltender here. If you look at these stats, we're comparing a freshman in his first year on the left with Robitaille, a sophomore All-American who, uh, as you said, had the, the skill, the talent to go on to the National Hockey League with Toronto. Uh, and also, I think you've got to take into factor with Braun's numbers, uh, the defense that he has around him. I know I'm accused of making excuses for the <laughs> goalies, but uh, a very young team, and particularly young on defense with a number of freshmen and sophomores playing. You mentioned on Friday that main game. Braun was pulled from that game in the third period. However, Crowder does not think that'll affect his uh, confidence tonight. On the other side of things, Michelle LaRocca, the veteran for BU, he gets the nod tonight for the Terriers. Well, you know, he's the uh, the big name uh, guy in this game. You think of a championship game, who are the big guys? Other than LaRock, the biggest names in this event are the two coaches, Parker and Crowder. Uh, but he's the guy that Northeastern has to solve, uh, clearly. He's uh, perhaps the most recognizable name on the ice tonight. He had backed up Tom Noble or split time with Tom Noble. Starting tonight, though, with Noble having graduated. Michelle's numbers in 98-99, a lot different from his three previous seasons at BU. But keep in mind, he hasn't had the same caliber defense in front of him this year, Joe. Well, not to sound like a broken record, <clears throat> you take away Chris Kelleher, Tom Pody, not only veteran defensemen, but these are National Hockey League defensemen too right now. And, uh, and he's been under the gun and had to do a lot more this season, particularly in the third period of games when he saved some of his best hockey. His uh, goals against in the third period, .91. Despite the stats overall being a little bit down for Michelle, the opponent's respect level remains the same. He's definitely their superstar. You know, uh, every team's got a superstar. and He's a powerful player. Uh, something the backbone of BU, you know. Uh, we'll have to beat him to, to beat the team. At the beginning, he, uh, it was difficult for him, you know, not having those guys to shut down uh, some of the offense that was coming at him. But as the season's uh, drawn on, he's really been holding that team in there. Um, you know, he played Stella against us at Walter Brown, and he made some great saves, but when he put so many shots on him and uh, in so many different situations, he's bound to give up some. And the Rock really has had to play the bulk of the minutes this season, some 91%. I made reference to it in years past. He had split time with Tom Noble. Uh, this year, he plays virtually every period for the Terriers. You know, I spoke with Jim Logue, the associate head coach of BC, before their game last week, and uh, Logue thought to, to get to them, they had to create some traffic in front of LaRock. Obviously, they didn't create enough traffic, and uh, LaRock, was, if he sees the puck, he's going to stop the puck. So I think the same task lies ahead for Northeast tonight, create some traffic in front. Do you see a key for this game quickly, Joe? What, what do we watch in the first period? Uh, I think... Goaltending, obviously, as we talked about, is a key. Uh, Northeastern's probably going to want to hit BU and, and play a little bit more physical in the BU game, but they certainly don't have too much respect for them on the, on the uh, heels of that win they had over at BU a couple of weeks ago. I think these two coaches are the, among the best in the country. We're going to see a close game. All righty, should be a good one. Joe, thanks for the insight. We'll see you again between periods one and two. Earlier tonight, BC and Harvard locked up in the consolation game in the Beanpot 99 play, and we checked the highlights in this one. The Eagles and the Crimson. Scott Clemenson looking for third place in the BC net for the Eagles. First period play, Jeff Stonehouse puts the backhander past Clemenson after a pass from Craig Adams. One zip Crimson ahead. They played in the final a year ago. Brian Johnson, the fabulous sophomore for the Eagles, ties the game at one, beating Oliver Jonas. Even Steven at one. 
Harvard on the three on two. Graham Morrell hits the trailer. Bryce Conklin, he fires it in 2-1. Crimson after one. BC now down 3-2 in the second period, and the puck bounces just right to Tony Hutchins. Tied game three apiece. BC rallying back. Now we go to the third period. BC takes its first lead. Gianta knocks in the pass from Blake Belfay. 4-3. Eagles at this point Hutchins is there for the lucky bounce again his second goal 5-3 BC Harvard got to within one but Chris Masters knocked in an empty netter for the 6-4 win that's the final BC beating Harvard things getting a little bit scary Joe for BC a team that was uh, preseason number one but uh, struggling to win the consolation game well they came back Friday night as well in a game against UMass Amherst on, on paper a mismatch with talent but they're down four to one had to come back and win that in overtime so they're, they're still looking for that stretch of wins one after another what can we read into from beanpot play for the rest of the season BC struggled a bit in last year's beanpot lost went on to play in the national championship game yeah, they had very similar record at this time of the year, but I think also last year, BC had Marty Reisner who got, who got hot right around this time, was almost a two-point-a-game player. They don't have that, that one player, uh, so they're just going to have to put it all together as a team. They certainly have the individual players, but as everybody knows, uh, great individuals don't always come together as a great team. Joe, thanks again. All righty, tonight's championship game starts in just a few minutes, and uh, be sure to uh, stay with 68 Sports between periods as Joe and I rejoin you for highlights and analysis. The game is next, though. Enjoy it.